If you're looking for a mini portable router, you'll want to stay tuned to this video because I'm going to review two routers that I bought from GLI Net, their Mango and their 750S. I bought the Mango version or portable router first because I was able to get it for under $25 and I thought I couldn't go wrong. You can still get it online on Amazon for just under $30. You can see how small and compact it is. It weighs just over one ounce. It comes with two Ethernet ports, a WAN and a LAN, a micro USB con uh, connection for power in. It uses five volts off of a typical PC, uh, one amp or less. So it'll be less than five watts of power consumption. Has a USB 2 port and has 128 uh, megabytes of internal RAM. It comes with a small Ethernet cable and a USB to micro USB cable to power it up. This Mango is designed to work at 2.4 gig and uh, it's actually very easy to set up. You can follow the colorful instructions in this Mango colored instruction booklet to um, get into the system set your password, set the language, whatever else you want to set. So I found the instructions very easy to follow when I set mine up. Now, as I said, this operates at 2.4 gig. And I saw they had another one called the 750S. And it is a little bit bigger and a little bit heavier, but still very lightweight, very small. It comes with fold up antenna, so it should give better range. It also works at 2.4 as well as 5 gig. And I think I paid $65 for this. It runs now around $71 on Amazon. This one comes with three Ethernet ports, one WAN, two LAN ports, a USB 2 port. It has a micro USB input power port. This one will take up to two uh, amps of current at five volts. It will also come with uh, USB, I'm sorry, USB to micro USB power cable. It comes with a small um, Ethernet cable. And this one comes with a charger. So it's a AC to USB charger, which can plug into that cable and plug into the wall. So I was intrigued to try this as well because of the antenna and the 5G capability. This also comes with a set of instructions on how to set it up. Now there are two ways that we can use one of these portable routers to, to connect to our astronomy equipment. The first is using it in the router mode if we're away from home at a dark site. And the second would be if we're at home and we want to use our home Wi-Fi network, we can use this as an extender to connect from our house out to the astronomy equipment. Now, the way you hook this up is the same whether you're using it in router mode away from home or extender mode at home. And the first thing you want to do is connect one of the LAN ports on the router to the LAN port on your device that's controlling your astronomy equipment. In my case, I use one of these B-Link mini PCs, but you could be using an Intel Nuke, you could be using a Raspberry Pi, uh, ASI Air, uh, or StellarMate, or Primalucci Labs Eagle, or anything like that. Whatever you're using to run your astronomy software that controls your equipment can be connected to one of these routers, and you would connect it from the LAN port on the router, not the WAN port. This has two LAN ports. This one has one. Actually, the third, the WAN port on this one can be reconfigured as a LAN port if you need it. I know some people are also using these wireless routers not only to connect to their um, ASI Air or StellarMate or Mini PC, but also to some mounts like a Losmandi Gemini, which require a LAN port connection to that to control the mount. In any event, you will use the um, cable that came with it, or in my case, I purchased a little bit smaller flat cable that I like, and I've got it kind of tied up to make it nice and small and compact. Connect it to one of those LAN ports here, 
and to the LAN port on the back of this one. And then you could use the USB to micro USB power cable, but I also bought a smaller cable which I prefer to use and I'll put links to these other cables at the bottom of the video so you can find them. And then I hook this into my USB port on the PC and into the micro USB port on the back of the router. And I also put some 3M strips on the bottom of the router and the top of the PC and then I connect this to here and then I have a nice compact setup which I mount on the leg of my tripod. You can mount it there, you can mount it on top of your OTA, whichever works for you. But the connections basically work the same regardless. And these physical connections will be the same whether you're working in the router mode or extender mode. The difference between those two modes will be in the setup uh, on the router itself and we'll go over that shortly. I do want to point out one other thing. I noticed on Kalani Knight's forum a lot of discussion about the power source for the router. And in principle, the router is specced at uh, two amps at five volts or 10 watts. And they give you one of these AC to USB converters if you have AC power available. Well, I'm plugged into a USB 2 port. And if you understand a USB port power connection, it's a maximum of 500 milliamps or 0.5 amps. So this is really only two and a half, supplying only two and a half watts. And even though I have a USB 3 on the front, it is a maximum of 900 milliamps or 0.9 amps. So neither of these connections will give two amps. They're far from it. But having used this like this for a year and a half, I haven't had any trouble with the power connection here. So I think the two amps at five volt spec is a way overkill on the requirements, but you'll have to see if that works for you. If the USB doesn't work for you, you can connect this to a different power supply uh, as other people have done. As I said before, the setup will be the same for the smaller Mango. The only difference is the lack of the antenna. So as we'll see, the range is not quite as good as it is on the 750S. And this only operates at 2.4 gig, where this operates at 2.4 and 5 gig. So you can get higher data rate transfer. So next, let's look at how you configure the software on the router because that can cause some confusion as well especially since you have two modes router mode and extender mode that we're interested in and by the way while we're on the topic there is a reset button on the side of this and there's also a reset button on the side of this so we may need to make use of that reset button when if we're trying to go from extender mode back to router mode so after you've made the proper connections between the router and your mini PC or ASI Air Pro or whatever it is that you're going to control from a distance and powered the router on, waited for the lights to come on, and it, and it will take upwards of a minute for that thing to be ready, you're going to want to log into the portable router and you'll do that by finding its SSID. Uh, I have already logged into it before, so the first time you log in, it will ask for a password, and that password will be contained in the shipping documentation. Usually it's printed on the back side, and they have up to now used Good Life as the default password for logging in. So we'll look for the SSID, and you see there's two here. There's the 750S 5G and the 750S, which is 2.4G. I will connect to that one. And for me, this usually takes a little while, so you need to be patient until it establishes the connection. Okay, now that it's connected, we can open a browser and go to the site 192.168.8.1. Again, this will be in the documentation that ships with it. And it'll ask you to pick your language and then I'll ask you to put in a password. 
and then confirm that password. And then submit it. And that'll be the password you use to connect to this. So the first tab is the internet tab. So this will tell you if how you're connected. So I don't have any cable connected to the WAN because I want to run this as a portable router. I'm not using it as an extender or repeater or using a modem or tethering or any of those things. So this is how it will come default. And if you look here, you'll see the information on 2.4 gig, the uh, wireless information. Here's the five. This also has the ability for you to set up guests on both of those, which will have different passwords. And um, so you really don't have to change anything here. But let's go down to the more settings. If you want to change the administrative password, you can do that here. And, um, and let's go. So let, let's so if you were to change this, you would put the old password in and put in the new password. I'm not going to change it. I already set this up. And then we go down to the network mode and you see it ships default router mode. So that's pretty much all you do and you can get out of this. So I use TeamViewer to connect to my mini PC. You can use whatever you want and if you're using something like the ASI Air it will have its own software for connecting. And then you just have to have the remote computer address, the correct address, and then it brings up my window for password. So this part is not part of the router, this is just part of my connection software. And it will bring up the desktop on my mini PC. So like I said, your this part of the software will be different for you. I can open the Sky X, then I can connect to all of my equipment with this and run things remotely, wirelessly while I'm out in the field. Okay? So that is how to do this using this in the router mode. If we wanted to go and use this at home, and extend our home Wi-Fi, we can do that as well. So we will be using our tablet, phone, laptop inside the house connected to our home Wi-Fi and that will then connect to the portable router in the extender mode. So we have to put it in the extender mode. When you do this, once you are successful doing this, you will not be able to log into this software uh, directly you'll have to use the reset button on the side to put the router the router back into the router mode so if we do that we then say next now here we go and look for what is the home network so I'm going to use this home network and then I have to put in the password on your home network and then hit apply and it'll go off and it'll establish a link and in this case since I will be connected via my home network I will be able to talk to the mini PC and also be able to go onto the internet with my laptop as well. So I'll be able to connect to everything on the internet from my laptop and also connect to the... As it points out up above, when you switch to this extender mode, you won't have access to the router internal software, this page anymore. And in fact, that's what's happening now. So I can actually close this I don't have to wait for this to do anything. And then I can, so let me close this. Then I can go in here and go to my home network, which is the one I went to. OK. 
Okay, and now I can still connect again to this thing. So I switch to the home network. And it'll ask me once again. All right, and then I'm back in. So now I can do the same thing. I can bring up the appropriate software. In my case, it's the Sky X on my mini PC. I can do whatever I need there. I can also go back to my home network. And if I want to browse the internet, then I can browse the internet because I do have internet access because I'm on my home Wi-Fi system. Or I can go back to my astronomy equipment. So there you have it. Now, if you are in this extender mode and you want to go back, there are several different ways of doing it. For me, the easiest way is to simply hold down the reset button on the side of the router for about five seconds, and that will put it back in the extender mode. And then you just connect to that uh, the same way I showed you in the beginning when it's originally in the router mode. So I would use the router mode while I'm out in the field and I don't have access to my home Wi-Fi and I could use the extender mode when I'm at home and I want to use my home Wi-Fi system and connect to the astronomy equipment out in the yard. And the one thing to keep in mind, when it's in the extender mode, you can't just do the 192.168.8.1 and get back into the uh, router software to put it back in the the router mode. The easiest way I find to get it back in the router mode and what they tell you on the, the instructions is you can hold the reset button down for about four or five seconds and that'll reset the router back to router mode and then you can just connect like I showed you in the beginning. Okay, hope this helps. At this point, the most important question about both of these routers remains to be answered, and that's how far can you get a reliable connection between your laptop or tablet or phone and one of these routers? So to find out, I did a series of tests on each of these. So let's just talk about the Mango router, which doesn't have the antenna and only works at 2.4 gig. I went to different distances in my backyard away from my backyard observatory to see at what distance I could maintain a reliable connection hour after hour. And the furthest away I could get from that observatory and maintain a good connection was 60 feet. The observatory is made of plywood about one inch thick and the roof on the observatory was closed. Although the plywood doesn't provide much of a damping effect for the wireless signal, it does provide some. But if you were going to be out in the field and you're sitting maybe in a tent or out under the stars yourself, while your equipment is obviously under the stars, you could easily get a 60 foot, maybe even longer, reliable connection between this and your equipment. And I think for most of us, 60 feet is well more of a distance than we typically set up from our equipment. Now, I also wanted to find out what if I were in my house, could I connect to this with my laptop using this in router mode and how far away in the house could I be. So I found that at 50 feet away from the observatory through the walls of my house I could maintain a connection uh, some of the time. I could go for several hours and sometimes it would drop off. So the connection was really mixed results and that's because I'm looking through the back wall of my uh, house which is stucco and so the stucco has some chicken wire to hold it on and that provides a little bit of a Faraday cage. So that test showed that from inside a house to uh, an observatory in the backyard, this is not gonna make a great uh, router connection. If you're inside the house and your equipment is just set up in the yard, you might be able to make a reliable connection um, 50 feet or less. Now. The truth is, for the last year and a half, I've been using this as my preferred router in the field. Well, this one works and is, uh, you know, much cheaper. This one, I think, works much better. And so, between 
the observatory and the furthest point in my yard, which is 100 feet, I was able to maintain a steady connection hour after hour, both at 2.4 gigahertz and at 5 gig. So I think you could even go further than that, but that's the extent of the distance I can get away in my yard. I also tested this one in the house, and at that same 50 feet from the house to the observatory, at 5 gig, I could not get and maintain a connection. But at 2.4 gig, I could get a reliable connection at 50 feet. So whereas this one sometimes worked at 50 feet, this one typically worked all the time at 50 feet, and the difference being, I think, the antennas. Now when I go out into the field, I actually am using an RV. And when the weather gets cold, I will go inside the RV and I also tested how far away the RV could be from the telescope sitting out under the stars. And in that case, I was able to test up to 100 feet as well away from the telescope and I still maintained a reliable connection hour after hour. So my preference is the 750S, even though it costs a little bit more, but if your need is just um, line of sight, 30 feet or less, this will work for you as well. Now the other way to use these routers is in the extender mode. And I tested this one in the extender mode. So this is again set up in my backyard observatory and set in extender mode to connect to my home Wi-Fi. And I could go to the furthest reaches of my house, uh, furthest corners of my house and still have reliable connection to this in my astronomy equipment. Now the reality is that's really uh, a test of the quality of your, an extension of your home Wi-Fi. How well does it work throughout your house connecting you to the Wi-Fi network and how strong of a signal you have in your backyard so that this thing can connect to that Wi-Fi. So, and it does help this has antennas. So I connected it, even at five gigahertz, I had no problem maintaining a reliable connection to the, this and the equipment in the observatory um, from my house network. So if you found this video helpful, please like the video. And you might also want to subscribe to this channel as I post other product reviews and astronomy tips from time to time. And if you want even more information on astronomy equipment and uh, equipment reviews and techniques, you can visit my website, californiaskies.com. I will put links to these uh, routers as well as to the shorter cables that I prefer to use uh, below the video. So thank you for watching.